Hello children, in today's class we will be starting the mathematical tools of physics. So when I say mathematical tools of physics, many students will get worked out. Sir, we are studying physics but what is the need of mathematics in a physics actually? Now some students who are, uh, you know, MBC background, they think, sir, already we have paper 1 and paper 2. Again, why we need to discuss in physics? And where are the bio students? A few students, I am not talking about all actually. Many, some, many students, they may love uh, botany, they may take bio PC. But some students who spoke with me personally also, because they got scared and uh, they may take, you know, uh, by PC also. So those students may think, sir, already we are getting scared with the mathematics so that we join with the by PC. Again, why we need to learn about a, a maths concepts in physics? So children, it's very important. Let me tell you, see, let me tell you, let me give you one example. Then you can understand, then you only will agree that, yes, sir, we should learn mathematical concepts, some maths concepts uh, so that uh, we get the command in the physics. So children, let me give you one small example. So let us say that uh, a person, so called Rajesh, is the best mechanic in the world. I mean what? He can do any kind of repair in any machine. It might be a vehicle or it might be any machine. For suppose, uh, you know, one company uh, just uh, gave a call to Rajesh and uh, just uh, said that, yes, dear Rajesh, we have some problem with some machine. Could you please come and visit our company? So as per the words of that management, Rajesh just, uh, you know, went to the uh, overtake in that company and uh, just uh, spoke to them and they, they have shown a particular machine and ask Rajesh to repair. Do you think that Rajesh, of course, Rajesh, no doubt about it, is a highly talented, he, have a, he has a great experience, full knowledge about all kind of machines. But do you think that Rajesh will do that repair, will solve the problem with his empty hands? Do you think that, again I repeat, do you think that Rajesh, the particular so-called great person with a great knowledge, great experience, great talent, can do that repair with only his empty hands? Obviously no. Definitely what will happen? He will take a help of a toolkit. A toolkit will be there. You have to repair any machine, right? So without the toolkit, his experience, his knowledge, no, it's, it's not a matter there actually. So may not help there actually. So definitely he should take the help of tools. So here I'm using a word called tool children. So with the toolkit only, what will happen? If the toolkit is provided to Rajesh, then what will happen? He can solve the problem very clearly. I mean, very easily he can solve. Similarly, children here, we may be having a physics knowledge. Okay, we have a great knowledge. We have great experience, let us say that. We can explain the concepts. But the thing is that if you want to derive your results, if you want to, you know, make a conclusions in a physics, definitely we need a mathematics. Means what here? Mathematics is a tool to understand physics in a better way. Mathematics is a tool so that we can express the physics in an easy manner. For example, you have done experiment, but how can you express the results? There we need mathematics. If you want to make a, you know, relations between a physical quantities, there also we need a mathematics. Okay, children. So maths is like a tool to understand. It's one of the best tool to understand the physics concepts in an easy manner. I can say that physics makes, sorry, mathematics makes physics more easier, more and more easier so that we can draw all kind of conclusions in any physical phenomena in which we are going to do some experiment or research or whatever it may be. So in a simple word, let me tell you, so if our body is like a physics, blood is like mathematics. Of course, this comparison uh, may give you love actually. Yes, but it's true here. Can you imagine a, a human body without blood children? No, we cannot imagine. We cannot imagine. Similarly, without mathematics, you know, it's too difficult to imagine a physics. I mean, we can imagine a physics. We have a physics. But to understand the physics, you know, mathematics is very, very important. Okay, children. So, let me tell you, maths is a tool to understand the physics. Okay, children. Okay, fine. And we are not going to learn in depth of mathematics actually. So whatever the parts of mathematics which are important to us only, we are going to learn. Under these mathematical tools, we will be learning differentiation, integration, and trigonometric ratios and the relations and some other little bit concepts of mathematics which are important to understand the physics children. Especially today, we are going to learn about a differentiation. So the moment when I say differentiation, you know, many students, I can say that this differentiation topic is a, you know, it's a boring concept to many students. What is the reason? 
so many students they think that differentiation means simply uh, knowing the formula substituting the values and getting results means they think that differentiation oh my god in differentiation we have many formulas in integration we have many formulas which we have to by heart which we have to apply to get the answers that is not correct children again i'm telling you unless you understand what actual differentiation really it's a boring even it's for you or for me it's boring only the again i'm telling you just understand the concept of differentiation we have to feel the concept of differentiation it's a very 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 important so in today's class children again i'm telling you i'm very uh, confident that after listening this class definitely you feel what actually differentiation is definitely you love the concept of differentiation and you know sometimes uh, in our physics only to calculate uh, you know instantaneous speed or instantaneous velocity what it may be generally what do we do we will take the slope of the graph right why we should take a slope in order to calculate either instantaneous speed or instant velocity instant acceleration what is the reason so generally our teachers and lecturers they'll tell that yes instantaneous speed let us take the slope and let us calculate okay we also will by heart that and we will calculate but what is the main reason behind this in today's class we will be discussing this is very 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 important so children in today's class mainly we will be covering we will be i mean i can say we will be understanding we are going to feel the concept of function what is a function children what is a function then differential coefficient then differential operator and finally we'll try to learn geometrical interpretation of differential coefficient so these are the very 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 small topics which we are going to cover so that you will enjoy the session okay children first of all let me just ask you a question oh my god what is this session is starting with the questions is not that just as a part of my lecture just i'm asking you not to worry about that okay what actually function is children children what is the function yes this is not a function i mean let us come to the subject i am not asking about what is the function and its celebration no it is not that children so what is a function children in general any teacher or lecturers immediately function means they'll take two variables let us take x is a variable y is a variable then they'll write if y depends on x they will write y is a function of x so i am not saying that it is wrong it is correct only but my point is that what are you understanding by writing y is equal to f of x why we should write y is equal to f of x only why not x is equal to f of y so children just by hating y is equal to f of uh, y is equal to f of x is not a matter we have to understand we have to feel the concept of function so children now just let us have that feel with the help of two examples so that you can understand you can feel what actually function is when you can say that one variable is a function of another variable am i clear yes children let us take example yes this we are very very familiar let us take a first, first example here so here is a tree here is a sun obviously as sunlight is falling on the tree definitely there will be a formation of shadow but the my point is that children do you think that the size of the shadow and its position also okay let us take for sake of, of course both also you can take but for sake of our convenience just i, I want to talk about only size children do you think that the size of the shadow is a constant or remains same from morning to evening obviously no obviously no the size of the shadow will be changing size of the shadow will be changing but the my point is that on which factor does the size of the shadow depends obviously we can say that direction of sunlight direction of sunlight as a direction of sunlight keeps on changing then what happens the size and as well as the position of the shadow also keeps on changing then we can say that we can say that the size and the position of the shadow is a function of direction of sunlight so let me write like this let me write it's very very important so let me write so that is size or you can say position also you can say position size or position of shadow shadow that is 
shadow that is size size or position of shadow what we can say is a function of direction of sunlight please children try to understand direction of sunlight direction of sunlight means as a direction of sunlight changes then what happens the size and position not or even the size and position of a shadow of the tree changes so i can say that the size and the position of the shadow is a function of direction of sunlight is it clear fine let us take one more example children we might be knowing about the fan regulator of course to on and off the fan we will use a uh, you know key but children in order to change the speed of the fan what do we do what do we use we use a regulator children am i right so as you keep on changing the position of the regulator what happens don't you think that the speed of the fan also keeps on changing obviously yes means for example if this knob is taken from 1 to 5 then what happened its speed increases to the maximum if the knob is taken to 5 to 2 let us say then what happens the speed of the fan decreases which means what here the speed of the fan is depending on the regulator position so now i can say that here speed of the fan i can say speed of the fan is a function of position of regulator function of position of regulator position of regulator let me write position of regulator position of regulator hope children you are feeling the concept of function so then i can i'm telling you here so that only we can see that what we can say here let us take here as the size and position of the uh, shadow of the image is what is keeps on changing with the direction of sunlight then we can say that size and the position of the shadow is a function of direction of sunlight whereas the speed of the fan is changing with the position of the regulator then we can say that speed of the fan is a function of position of a regulator children here one more point we have to understand we have to feel what is that do you think that direction of sunlight or position of a regulator or constant or will be changing yes direction of sunlight is not a constant and the position of a regulator also is not constant means these two are also variables only so children these two are also variables only try to understand these two also these two are variables then what can you say about these two speed of the fan size and position of the shadow do you think these are constants no these two are also variables these two are also variables then you make it a one doubt what is the difference between these variables and these variables children try to understand these variables are independent these variables are independent whereas these variables are dependent variables very 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 important is it clear children it's very 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 important please try to understand please try to understand now children like this we can take a n number of examples we can take a n number of examples to feel the concept of function for suppose children can i write like this speed of the fan speed of the fan or else can you say like this let me tell you let me take let me take so let me give you one more example that is what here for example intensity of intensity of light that is tube light tube light intensity of tube light is a function of regulator of fan regulator of fan can you say this no it is wrong it is wrong here means though you go on changing the regulator of fan do you think that the intensity of light will be changing no so here intensity of a tube light is a not a function is a not a function of regulator of a fan just i'm giving you you know try to give you a clarity okay children please try to understand just try to feel the concept of function try to feel the concept of function is a very very important children please try to understand it's such a interesting topic a differentiation is actually okay na fine now children so like this as i said that you know n number of variables here you can take n number of variables here you can take okay na fine for suppose children for suppose here so y is a one variable x is a one more variable try to understand such a way that y depends on x 
such as that y depends on x which means what as you go on changing the x values obviously y values will be changing then we can say that y is a function of x y is a function of x here x is what children here independent variable and what is y here dependent variable and which means what for every value of x for every value of x there will be a there will be a one value even for y also children here as i am changing that if x value changes y value changes may not be proportionally but definitely will change then only we can say that y is a function of x hope children i am clear just take this example then we'll continue so children we just uh, till now we understood the concept of function so till now we discussed what actually function is and children how can we uh, write the uh, depend dependence of y on x children that can be written as y is equal to f of x children function means it is not that compulsory you should write as f of x only in a different textbooks in a different uh, stages of learning you know we will be using different expressions means this can be written y is equal to f of x or y is equal to phi of x or y is equal to r let me write or or y is a even psi of x also so these three so these are the three ways uh, in which we can express y as a function of x children now next what are we going to learn so next let us learn what actually difference what actually difference children difference means you know we all are we all know very well right what actual difference is so we learn that is okay subtraction only subtraction okay now for suppose children as we are saying here x is a variable of course it might be independent variable variable and y is also variable right yes these two are variables only so as these two are variables children definitely there will be initial values there will be final values because variable means what whose value will be changing continuously okay na? let us say that for example for this the initial value of x let us take x and the final value children final value means not that at the end only next second okay na? let it be x plus a delta x small value is added to it okay na? as x value is changing obviously y value also changes let the initial y value is y and the final y value let us say it's a y plus delta y okay so there is a initial value final value but what is the difference in x what is the difference in y it's very important children so now i want to calculate difference please try to understand difference in x how can you calculate this x final minus x initial so this can be written as x plus delta x minus x so this we are going to get as a delta x whereas difference in y children difference in y so obviously as there is a difference in x definitely there will be difference in y also so how can we this y final minus y initial is equal to y plus delta y minus y is equal to delta y try to understand children what is the delta x children difference in x what is the delta y difference in y actually means as delta y is depending on x as that is y is depending on x as y is a function of x whenever there is a change whenever there is a difference in x definitely there will be a change in the y value there will be difference in the y value also I may clear so you may get one doubt sir what is the need of learning the difference in x and a difference in y yes let us see here children so here let us take a ratio of differences ratio of differences that is delta y by delta x so children with this we can understand how the difference in y value is changing with respect to the difference in x value means here we are comparing so this is a 
comparative study of change in y value with respect to the x value how the changes are happening in delta y with respect to the delta x this only we can call it as a differentiation in a simple manner so children what actually differentiation is so differentiation is a branch of mathematics which deals with the comparative study of differences of two variables how this delta y is changing with respect to the delta x that only this comparative study of these differences only we can call it as a differentiation so i repeat once again what is the differentiation differentiation is a, a branch of mathematics which deals with the comparative study of two variables that is here delta y and delta x how delta y is changing with respect to delta x this study only we can call it as a differentiation here it might be y and x somewhere it might be a and b and p and q you can take any two variables how this variable how this change how this variable is going to change with this delta x how this delta y is changing with respect to the delta x this study only this comparison only we can call it as a differentiation is that clear fine let us proceed children here let us proceed and here one more very 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 important thing is that here sometimes you know some students will be taking uh, delta x and dx are the same and even you know some teachers that is so called lecturers they will be telling oh, you can take dx dx is nothing but delta x only but children when to use delta x when to use dx is very very important children here for suppose no, let us take a delta x and this is what actually change in x try to understand change in x what is the delta y here delta y is change in y change in y so it's very clear that if there is a change in x value obviously there will be change in y value also but children how small the change is how big the change is very very important for suppose children for suppose x initial value is let us say 2 cm let us say example and x final value will be 1.9999999999 okay let us take this is the final value okay let us say this is initial value anything is okay okay no? 9 cm then what is the change in x value children change in x value it might be 0.0000000000001 cm okay na look at here delta x is how much very 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 small very very small sometimes we can neglect sometimes we can say it is nothing but zero children it is nothing but zero but not zero try to understand this this point is very very important so i can say here delta x is equal to 0.0000001 cm means it is nothing but zero only i mean what here delta x tends to zero means if this much small change is taking place in x then what will be the change in y value children obviously it is also extremely small please try to understand it's very very important so delta x is very very small it's almost zero it's tends to zero chill it tends to zero is not zero so here delta x value is tending towards the zero it's very very important if there is a like you know this much change is happening this much change is taking place in x value obviously simultaneously what happens you know there will be change in y value but how much very 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 small very very small then how can we write this difference in a delta y with respect to the delta x children look at here we can write here limit limit delta x tends to 0 then this delta y by delta x can be written as dy by dx children please try to understand very 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 important means dy by dx as you are writing which means when you can write like this actually when delta x tends to 0 then only you can write this as a delta y by delta x can be written as dy by dx dy by dx provided here delta x tends to 0 then only we can write children here here 
this dy by dx we also can write like this d by dx of y d by dx of y children here this d by d by dx only we can call it as a differential operator very very important differential differential operator differential operator this dy by dx we can call it as a differential coefficient of differential differential coefficient of differential coefficient of y with respect to the x with respect to the x it's very very important so here this d by d by dx is called differential operator it can be operated only on this variable children try to understand variable if it is a constant what will happen yes we'll be studying in next classes not to worry about this dy by dx is called actually differential coefficient of y with respect to the x so children it also can be written limit delta x tends to 0 of f of x plus delta x minus f of x by delta x is equal to dy by dx dy by dx okay children fine so again i'm telling it's very 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 important so here this term dy by dx is called differential coefficient of y with respect to the x subjected to delta x tends to zero delta x tends to, again i'm telling you, this delta x tends to zero only we can write dy by dx sorry delta y by delta x as dy by dx so here delta x means what children it is not zero it is not zero just it tends to zero it is a very very small sometimes we can say neglected so neglected but doesn't mean that it's zero so very very minute very small almost zero approaches zero but not zero okay no? when delta x tends to zero then only we can write delta y by delta x expression as dy by dx which is called differential coefficient of y with respect to x subjected to delta x tends to zero okay children so this is what actually the concept of differentiation okay now just you copy it we will see the geometrical interpretation of the differential coefficient means as you know we know that you know we'll be saying that uh, uh, instantaneous change in speed so whenever uh, displacement time graph is given when we are asked to calculate the instantaneous speed immediately we can calculate the slope Ara, why we should take a slope actually what is the relation between this instantaneous speed to the slope calculating the slope so why are we getting the value of instant speed with the slope only so that we will be understanding now just you copy this geometrical interpretation of differential coefficient so children so uh, we understood if y is a variable like a dependence of y on x how can we write if y is a function of x so we can write y is equal to f of x so this is very clear so with this it's very clear that y is a function of x here x is an independent variable y is a dependent variable when x value will be changed obviously there will be a change in the y value also for suppose children let us say here y is a function of x can be written as y is equal to x square so which means what if you go on taking the value for, let me write here for suppose y is a function of x means let us take one example children example so y is a depending on x such as that y is equal to x square let us say for example children here x is equal to 0 then what will happen y is equal to 0 if x is equal to 1 y is equal to 1 if x is equal to 2 y is equal to 4 if x is equal to 3 y is equal to 9 like this like this n number of values are possible so now as we are getting a different see we are getting a different value of x or what a y for a different value of x as x values are changing obviously y value will be changing means we will get some set of y values for a set of x values now let us make a graph for example here y is a function of fi f of x for this if a graph is made how the graph is going to be let us see children so graph will be so this is a it is b okay children so here i am telling you y is a function of x y is a function of x so for that 
just so we made a graph so that let us take one exam just it's like example to understand so this is how actually we got and here is origin children here x is independent variable as we know that independent variable is taken on x a dependent variable that is a y is taken on a y axis only okay here a b is a curve which we which we obtain for a y is equal to f of x now children on this curve a b let us take two points for example so let us say the point c point c let us take a small oh, let us say the point c uh, such a that it has some x value and it has some y value so let us say its coordinates are x comma y its coordinates are it c is a point x comma y are taken okay so somewhere else here let us take a point d let us take a point d so that it also has some x value and there will be a some y value there will be some y value so let us say its x coordinates are x plus delta x comma y value is y plus delta y now children let us join this c and d let us join this point c and point d what do we get we get we get like this on a straight line we get on straight line this so fine children so here we joined c and d with a straight line we got a straight line children so this what actual called this called actual chord right so here cd is nothing but cd is nothing but chord what is chord children the straight line which can join any two points on the circumference of circle okay now fine so now children let us uh, you know extend this cd towards x axis so like this so let me use this red color only children just uh, to have a good vision only i made this much thick uh, straight line actually it is not mandatory that much thick line okay na? so let us extend this towards the x axis so that what is happening here it is making some angle try to understand so here it is making some angle so let us say this is a alpha children so here alpha is an angle made by the cd that is a chord with x axis okay children fine now from the c make a one perpendicular line towards d so let us name it as a a b c d e f let us name it as a g let us g okay children. now the important point this is a point where we have to understand what happens if i go on making this d towards c what will happen it's very very important very very important Achha, before that from this triangle if you can see children as here is an angle obviously this also is going to be alpha angle only now from this triangle look at here from uh, c not a it is so from c d g so can we define tan alpha obviously so tan alpha is equal to what direction tan alpha is equal to it is g d opposite side by opposite side by uh, adjacent that is g c so, but children here what is g d what is g c is very very important so uh, g d can we write like this g d is equal to g d is equal to can we write like this f d minus f g obviously we can write obviously means you can hear this value is what children if you can see this value is y plus on y axis on y axis try to understand this total is what children is a y plus delta y but this is what actually y please try to this is a y from here to here is a delta y so this can be written as y plus delta y minus y so here gd is equal to we got y try to understand gd is equal to y then what about gc value it's very important gc value means this is a difference difference of x right so here gc can be written as gc can be written as of minus oe children try to understand so here cg is nothing but ef how can you get ef children from this of if i can take out this oe part i will get ef ef is nothing but cg so this is going to be children here x plus delta x minus x oe value is x so here gc is equal to x what we are getting sorry 
so this is delta y this is delta y so obviously this is going to be a delta x so now substitute here so we got here tan alpha is equal to delta y by delta x tan alpha is equal to delta y by delta x now children for suppose for suppose if d this point d is approaching a point c try to understand how to understand that for suppose look at here children for suppose here this is that curve so initially this is a point c this is a point d try to understand then what happened here we got a line like this if this d point you are taking at this point then this will be a straight line if this point d is taken here so this will be a straight line this point is taken here d so this will be a straight line what happens if it's taken very 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 close to c is my question very close to the c children it's very very important means not like a coinciding d is not coinciding with the c but rather it is taken very 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 close very very close let's suppose this is a point where d is taken very very close now join the straight line now join these two lines what happens children See if you can join the C and D, it is nothing but a tangent, right? Okay, okay, we'll see. Uh, can you please copy this so that I need a space here? Just copy this. Three, two, one. Copy. Three, two, one. Copy. Yes. Now, so here what we got actually till now we got tan alpha is equal to tan alpha is equal to we got delta y by delta x. This is what actually we got clear function so what is happening here now we are taking we are taking a point d is a very 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 close to c children d is not coinciding with the c but it's approaching very very close very of course more than this closeness uh, you also you can take but for me it's too difficult to show you right okay now, so let us this point d is taken very very close to c now you join now if we can join what will happen let me try to use another sketch okay so children now let us extend this x axis extend this x axis fine children now this cd i am joining try to understand cd i am joining this is meeting let us say at a point uh, h such that children it is also making some angle let us say it's a theta so it's a very very important here what happened here this point d we have taken very 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 close to point c then you can just draw a chord it is nothing but what it is tangent to this curve at that point c at that point c it's very very important means one more thing we need to understand as a d value d point d is approaching point c don't you think that this f will be moving towards e e e e e means this is nothing but what children is delta x nothing but what actually delta x this is nothing but what actually delta y means as a point d is approaching towards point c this delta x value also decreasing as a delta x value will be decreasing obviously what happens there will be change in the y value there will be decrease in the delta y delta y also means d is approaching c almost it's not coinciding almost approaching c means what this f also will be approaching e means what will be the delta x value children delta x value will be approaching zero means it's going to very very small means can i write like this so as point d is approaching point c children this delta x is approaching zero then obviously delta y also approaching zero try to understand so as delta x is approaching zero delta y also approaches zero then what happens this alpha is becoming a theta that is what alpha is approaching theta alpha is approaching theta children when delta x approaches zero then how this expression can be written children look at here limit delta x tends to zero of this delta y by delta x then it can be written as it can be written as dy by dx dy by dx 
then how can we write i can write in the place of alpha we can write theta y because delta x is approaching zero so it can be written as here dy by dx is equal to tan theta children what is tan theta tan theta is a slope of the curve children try to understand so dy by dx is slope of the curve slope of the curve at point c okay children so here dy by dx is nothing but what each children is a slope of the curve at point c actually means what children differential coefficient dy by dx is what actually called differential coefficient is nothing but the slope of the curve at that point actually so what does this dy by dx represent children this dy by dx is also called as instantaneous change in y with respect to the x that is the reason children whenever we want to calculate the instantaneous change in any variable directly we can take the slope of the curve at that point see this is a reason what actually hope i am clear children why we should take why we should calculate a slope of the curve at that point in order to calculate the instantaneous you know either speed or acceleration for a given any graph actually so this is a reason this is a approach this is a reason behind this point actually so children once again i'm telling you try to understand the concept try to feel the concept please try to feel the concept of function and try to understand what actually differential coefficient what actually differential operator and why do we calculate the slope of the curve at that point in order to calculate the instantaneous change in y value with respect to the x okay children so these are the concepts which i wanted to discuss with you all so children in the next class we will be discussing the theorems of differentiation from there we will be starting the numericals how can we use the concepts of differentiation in our physics in order to solve many kind of problems okay children thank you so much all the very best